Hello my dear friends, you're on the military summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 17th of September of 2024. We have a lot of very interesting updates so let's start and first we're going to talk about the most important update for the previous 24 hours, we're going to talk about the city by the name of Ukrainsk. The Russian sources published the video how they managed to establish complete control over this territory. The video was published today on the 17th of September of 2024 and in this video we can see the landfill, can see the city of Ukrainsk itself and the most important we can see the Russian soldiers that were moving between the streets and the most important we can see the video how the Russians were raising the Russian flag on the most on the biggest building in the area on the territory of the coal mine of Ukrainsk. This is the moment this is exactly the moment where the Russians were waiting for a very long period of time in this video we can see two Russian soldiers that raised their flag the flag of 114th Matarized Brigade of the Amut Forest Russian Federation on the highest building building uh, of the city of Ukrainsk. This is 100% sure evidence that the Russians during the previous uh, few days managed to establish complete control not just over the residential part but also over the landfill and the coal mine of Ukrainsk. The Ukrainians suffered significant defeat and were forced to fall back. Now the Russians are able to move further, now the Russians are able to attack in direction of Tsukurne and in direction of Girnik. And if the Russians are able to take under control these two cities and to improve their positions around them. This is going to be the, the beginning of the end of the armed force of Ukraine in the direction on, in the Kurahova area because from this perspective the Russians will be able to establish complete control over the territory between Kurahova water reservoir and the cities of Tsukurne and uh, the city of Garniak. And the Ukrainians most likely would be forced to fall back very fast in the western direction probably until the city of Andreevka and the next defense belt is going to be exactly along the line between Andreevka and the city of Pakrovsk so this is the situation and obviously this is the significant disaster of the armed force of Ukraine now let's move a little bit back and let's discuss the situation in the vicinity of Konstantinovka the Ukrainian sources published the video of how they were after withdrawing the Russians along the road between the village of Pobeda and the Konstantinovka itself. In this video we can see FPV drone attack on the Russian demining tank that was moving from the north and the southern direction and this video confirms Russian control over the territory. We haven't managed to adjust the map because the update re re let's say appeared right before we start making the video but before the next video we will adjust the map in Russian favor and we will color this territory everything along TO425 uh, under control of Russian Federation. Now let's discuss the situation in the vicinity of Ugledar. We haven't received anything that can confirm additional progress of the armed force of Russian Federation. We have just one video of how uh, the Russians were after withdrawing the Ukrainian evacuation staff uh, behind the coal mine of South Donbass number one. In this video we can see how the Russians discovered the movement and the positions of the armed force of Ukraine and then the Russians began bombing this territory. This video confirms that at least this part of these territories under complete Ukrainian control. Now let's return back and let's talk about the original Pakrov's direction. According to information we have, the Russians managed to establish complete control over the coal mine of the Novogrodovka III. So this territory was captured by the Russians according to pro-Ukrainian sources. During the previous 24 hours, the Ukrainians uh, conducted a number of counter-attacks with the purpose to slow down the Russians. But most of those attacks were repelled and the Ukrainians haven't managed even to answer the territory of clashes. Uh, for example, in this video in the northern part of Novogrodovka, the Russians discovered the positions of the armed forces of Ukraine and destroyed them as a result of FPV drone attack. A little bit further in the western direction we can see another Ukrainian vehicle that was heading towards the uh, city of Novogrodovka but was destroyed as a result of FPV drone attack. We have uh, changes on the ground in the village of Grodovka. First, uh, during the previous 24 hours and somewhere in the morning of the 17th of September, the pre-Ukrainian sources Deep State adjusted their maps in Russian favor and added additional territory under complete Russian control in the central part of Grodovka. But later, the Russian sources published additional video. And in this video, we can see the movements of the Russian stormtroopers in the most western part of the village, which confirms additional Russian control. And this is 
is 100% sure confirmation of the Russian presence exactly in this part of the village. According to this map and according to this video, the Russians were moving something like this. And based on this video, we have adjusted the map in Russian favor. Now let's move further and let's talk about the city, about Arkhangelsk, uh, about this direction. Uh, during the previous 24 hours, the Russians published the video how they were attacking the Ukrainian positions to the north of Arkhangelsk. In this video, we can see uh, the how the Russians first were clearing the Ukrainian trenches and the fortifications with FPV drones. As you can see, the Russians still hasn't started using the flamethrower drones. They still use the drones with explosive. And later, the Russian two Russian soldiers came to the same area and suggested the Ukrainians in these trenches to surrender, and he accepted this proposal. Now let's move and let's talk about Taryetsk agglomeration. Today, uh, neutral mappers have adjusted their maps in Russian favor, and according to this uh, update, according to this report, the Russians managed to establish significant control over the territory around the, the uh, to the west of the uh, Terikon and the landfill of uh, Artyoma. Uh, of this uh, this whole coal mine the russians answered uh, the block of the bulk of the city of terez and currently the russians control around uh, 25 percent of this block of this agglomeration significant progress of the armed force of russian federation of course the russians are not going to stop they will continue moving from this area further in the north in direction with the purpose to force the ukrainians to fall back also a reminder that during the previous few days we got lots of updates and a lot of reports of additional russian progress in this in this direction as well now let's move further and let's talk about the Chasavyar direction. We have additional changes on the ground and we have additional geolocations. The Russians continue bombing and attacking the central part, the heart of, uh, of uh, Chasavyar. In this video, we can see a few more FAPs arrived in the central part of the city, where the Ukrainians concentrated uh, their reserves, uh, their warehouses, ammo depots, and of course, the uh, operational, um, let's say, command center. As for the clashes on the ground, currently, according to information we have, the heaviest clashes are taking place in the northern part, in the vicinity of Grigorov, and we have uh, the uh, some changes on the ground, according to pro-Russian mappers, and according to information we have, the Russians are moving and trying to expand their positions, uh, uh, to the south uh, of Chasavyar, trying to get as close as possible to the road N32. Now let's move further and let's talk about uh, the severe direction. Currently, the Russians are focused uh, in this uh, dense network of the fortifications. Uh, during the previous 24 hours, the Russians continue bombing and attacking exactly this point. In this video, we can see the Ukrainian uh, positions, machine gun position that was under very heavy fire. Currently, the Russians can't go through because of this uh, stronghold of the armored force of Ukraine and uh, during since the beginning of September we have at least three geolocations exactly from this point which confirms that this territory is very powerful um, let's say dense net for complex network of the fortifications and until the Russian and the Russians are can't move further until they take this territory under complete control now let's move further let's talk about the south and Kupin's direction where according to pro-Ukrainian sources the Russians uh, were forced to fall back uh, from the territory to the east uh, of Tarskoe so these fields were captured by the Ukrainians, according to pro-Ukrainian sources deep state. A little bit further in the northern direction, the Russians managed to improve their position significantly uh, by taking under control significant number of trenches, fortifications, defense belt, forest lines, and so on. The Russians improved their positions and they got as close as possible to uh, the city, to the village of Nevsk, and currently the distance between farms and Russian edge positions is already less than one kilometer. Significant progress of the armed force of Russian Federation yet without any geolocation that can confirm this. Most likely if this information is correct during the next uh, 72 hours the Russians will try to improve their positions exactly along these lines, along these fields and most likely something from this uh, cloud is going to be taken by the Russians. Now let's talk about the Pishana flower which is continue blooming. Today we have additional reports from different mappers including neutral pro-Ukrainian and pro-Russian that the Russians improved their positions around the village of Pishan and the thing is the weird thing is that Ukrainians show no resistance at all. The Ukrainians, it's uh, one can say that Ukrainians decided to abandon their positions among the fields and show no resistance to the Russians. Currently, the Ukrainians are trying to concentrate their force along the river, river of Askol and along the citadels and the strongholds that were prepared by the Ukrainians. I'm not sure that the Ukrainians are able to hold these positions for a very long period of time due to the river of Askol that uh, lays behind the Ukrainian positions. If the Russians are able to get closer, the Ukrainians basically will be cut from supply and will be forced to fall back. Now, 
Now let's talk about the city of Alchansk. Today the uh, Russian sources published the video of how they were bombing and attacking the city. And in this video we can see several uh, artillery strikes in several positions. Most of, the, most of the positions of Russian artillery strikes were geolocated and we have added them on map. And according to this video and according to the geolocations we managed to collect, the Russians most likely were forced to fall back from the aggregate plant which was recaptured by the Ukrainians. If you remember, this territory was either in contested area or under complete Russian control. Now we see that most likely the Russians were forced to fall back during the difficult situation in the Kursk direction. Most likely the Russians redeployed a significant number of forces exactly in that area and that allowed the Ukrainians to conduct uh, several successful counter-attacks which allowed them to restore control over this territory. Now let's talk about uh, the Kursk direction where the Russians continue their own counter-offensive, where the Ukrainians continue their own offensive. There are very heavy clashes all over the line of combat contact and we start receiving very interesting video. E um, videos. If you have access to map, you might take a look at this icon. We will not watch the video due to uh, let's say not very um, pleasant, uh, let's see, scenes and so on. Uh, but if you have access, you can open this video and you will see uh, the Russians uh, staying uh, everywhere in the Suji direction uh, along different signs of different settlements. And according to this video, the Russians during the previous few days managed to improve their position significantly and basically take under control everything that located uh, inside of this red line. Currently, we're trying to make something like investigation investigation to understand whether the video is real and the episodes from this video is real and if the episodes are real then we will adjust the map in Russian favor obviously once again if the video we've just discussed is correct and real then the Ukrainians were completely defeated in the northern and in the western part of the Suja salient and most likely during the next few days they will begin uh, significant uncontrolled withdrawing their positions uh, without waiting or without receiving any orders from the Ukrainian commanders. Now let's move further. Uh, the Russians continue bombing and attacking and intensifying the pressure on Ukrainian positions in the northern flank. We have a lot of videos of how the Russians were hunting and attacking the Ukrainian Convoys. For example, in this video, we can see the Ukrainian convoy that the Ukrainians collected with the purpose probably to uh, to withdraw their positions, but the Russians didn't allow the Ukrainians to do this, and basically the convoy was destroyed as a result of FPV drone attacks. To the south of Volgovka, the Ukrainians continue concentration of forces with the purpose to move further also in the southern direction, but the Russians are not allowing to do this. Ukrainians and attacking and bombing them. Uh, furthermore, in to the south of Kriminoa, we have uh, Ukrainian vehicles that were heading to the south in direction of uh, to the evacuation zone most likely but this vehicle were also uh, trapped ambushed and destroyed by the Russian FPV drone attacks so the critical situation is something like a panic is currently taking place exactly in this part of the Suja area as for the city itself the Russians continue bombing and attacking the Ukrainian forces on the territory of the city and this video we can see the warehouses and ammo depots in the western part of Suja that were attacked by the Russians probably with Iskanders or with Fabs, and as a result of attacks we can see very heavy explosion, probably the secondary detonation. So the Russians are preparing the city also for very heavy clashes, but once again I believe that the city of Suja would be reduced to ruins. The same story we will see in Suja as we used to see in Vavchansk, because either the Ukrainians are encircled or they are able to uh, cut their supply uh, lines. Zelensky will try to make everything he can but to hold this territory as long as possible until he will clarify and he will uh, approve get approval or authorization from the western countries including from joe biden according to his peace plan obviously his peace plan is something very weird and something very difficult to understand but Zelensky still believes that ukraine um, can uh, retake everything until the borders of 1991 uh, so let's see what kind of plan Zelensky prepared um, obviously this plan includes uh, the use of long-range missiles. I'll remind you that yet the Western countries, I'm talking about the United States of America, United Kingdom, haven't authorized Ukraine to use long-range missiles deep inside of the territory of Russian Federation. And furthermore, I'll remind you that recently the Houthi began using their own hypersonic missiles to attack the territory of Israel, which most likely were, and most likely the Houthi were authorized by Russian Federation to use this type of weapon because this is the only country 
country who can who can provide who would provide this uh, uh, small Middle East country with uh, this weapon. So most likely that was something like a signal to the Western countries for not uh, uh, for don't make another escalation in Ukraine and let's uh, start everything to uh, to close. Now let's talk about Glushkova area where the Ukrainians continue their attempts to break through the Russian defense belt. Uh, currently the Ukrainians managed to establish control just over some small territories along the border and telling the truth we've seen we've seen this configuration of the line of combat contact three days ago and now we see the same situation as you can see the Ukrainians haven't managed to improve their positions uh, they continue sending additional forces and everything that uh, enters the Gushkova region is being destroyed by the Russians as a result of artillery strikes and FPV drone attacks and uh, so this is another disaster but most likely this is not something like the primary target of the Ukrainians most likely the Ukrainians launched this offensive just to distract Russian attention as I understand and according to information we are receiving most likely the main activities are going to take place exactly in the Bryansk direction because there are a lot of forests and so on and I'll remind you that exactly this territory, oh, the Russians announced the evacuation from their side and the Ukrainians announced the evacuation from their side. Furthermore, we have a lot of artillery strikes and certain activization, intensifying of activity of the armed forces of Ukraine and the Russian Federation along this border. Uh, in this video, we can see another sabotage and reconnaissance group of the armed forces of Ukraine that was ambushed by the Russian artillery forces. The Russians began bombing and attacking them. I'll remind you that almost the same picture we saw before the beginning of the Ukraine Ukrainian Kursk offensive, we saw a lot of sabotage groups crossing the border and then we saw what we saw. So the Ukrainians also are planning to activate their, to improve their activities in this direction. And now let's move to Zaporozhye area and once again according to information we have, the Ukrainians or either the Ukrainians or the Russians are preparing something in this territory. We have additional videos uh, with FPV drones attacks from the Russian side on Ukrainian positions, which confirms two things. The Russians concentrated FPV drone operators with attack drones uh, this is the first thing and but on the other side we understand that the Ukrainians also brought additional vehicles and armored vehicles to the line of combat contact and that the Ukrainians are also ready, ready to begin something big so currently we don't know for sure what is going to happen but maybe uh, the Zaporozhye direction is also a part of uh, uh, Zelensky victory plan and Zelensky wants to take under control the city of Energodar with Zaporozhye power plan and maybe then to blackmail the Russians and to force them to sit uh, uh, to the negotiation table. And that's it for today. Military Summary Channel reminds we condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for your watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes to my Patreon and have a good day. Bye bye.